G'day guys, my name is Miles. And my name is Fez. And this is The Commodity, and today we're reacting to five creepiest and most haunted locations in the world, episode four, Australia. That's super like, Valley Dude. <laughs> yeah, the world, dude. episode four. We're watching Australia. episode four, man. This video is requested to us by Heath Chaz. Thank you so much, Heath. We truly appreciate it. So we've done videos like this in the past for other countries. This is actually the first haunted or creepiest type video that we've done for Australia. So that's super exciting that this was recommended to us and we didn't have this. It was this. reprimanded. It was reprimanded. This was re re requested. Shit. This was recommended and requested to us. So we truly appreciate that. Guys, if you have any more creepy and haunted videos, I am super into that kind of stuff. So the link to our Discord is in the description. Go ahead and hop down there after this video. If you find another one you want us to check out, throw the link to that video in our Discord. Before we hop into this video, if you would, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out in getting these videos out to more people. Also, if you would, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. That way you guys can stay informed on our future videos. And if you'd like to help support the channel even more and get an exclusive. Exclusive, exclusive, exclusive. YouTube short shout out. Click that join button down below. Let's hop in. You all right? I'm good. You looked like you were zoning out there for a minute, bud. Uh, just like I said before, hearing your voice just puts me out. <laughs> Fives. Australia probably isn't the first country you think of when discussing haunted places. Yeah, all right. This Off is... the bat, he doesn't sound Australian. If anything is wrong in this video, sorry, it's not our fault. This sounds like Anthony Mackie from, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the show that Anthony and Mackie's on. But surprisingly, it has its fair share of locations that are said to be filled with paranormal activity. This has to One be of him. which is usually rated in the top 10 most haunted places in the world. From haunted houses with terrible and tragic backstories to cursed pools that have claimed the lives of many people, Australia is the focus for episode four of our most haunted locations around the world series. Before Here, we get pause started, it real though, quick. that's uh, Australia. Hit escape. I want to see here if it says whose voice that is because. It sounds like he does, uh, what is this show that he does? He does a TV show and he does a radio show. I have no idea you're talking about. Uh, Just or, click the show more. It might, I might have it in the description. No. no. And, and it's, uh, yeah, no. Don't forget to check out the new creepy limited edition Top 5's black hoodie over on the Top 5's website. It looks awesome, is incredibly comfy to wear, and is the perfect piece of clothing for sitting in the house these cold months Halloween and watching scary special. videos. Hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. Blood hoodie. The Fremantle Arts Centre. The Fremantle Arts Centre in Western Australia was built in 1864 using convict labour and was originally or used as a lunatic asylum. A lunatic. It was notorious for overcrowding, abuse, and death. It's said to be one of the most haunted buildings in Western Australia, and it's hardly surprising when you hear about its gruesome past. The asylum was originally suitable for inmates thought to be criminally insane, but with increased demand, it was soon added to and accommodated patients from all walks of life who were considered to have social problems. <laughs> These included prostitutes, the elderly, or just workers suffering from sunstroke. One of its biggest hmm. tragedies was in the middle of the 1900s when a local girl named Catherine Clifford was admitted when her behavior had become erratic after she had gone missing and returned home several weeks later. Mrs. Clifford's husband visited her. Go back to that picture real quick. Like, I don't care if it's just like a family, like holding hands and being happy. Black and white pictures like this are just eerie in general. Yeah. But this adds, you know, I mean, and this really just looks like a bunch of elderly people. Right. Like, I just put all the elderly people in this criminally insane <laughs> place just because they, they didn't want dementia to deal and shit. It's just like, we're done with you. And returned home several weeks later. 
Mrs. Clifford's husband visited her and found her unconscious with a black eye and scratches to her face. She had suffered the injuries after being attacked by the violent inmate she was sharing her room with. Three That's days tough. later, Mr. Clifford received the following telegram. Your wife died this afternoon. Reply, yeah. RE burial. After the death, concerns were raised about the treatment That's of it? the patients with suspicion. That's a really shitty way to inform somebody that yeah, their wife no. died. Yeah, no. Crap. Could you imagine? Your wife's dead. <laughs> Sorry. That Mrs. Clifford not even had that. been beaten by staff. She was As a beaten result, by staff. and another death not long after, the asylum was marked for closure. Although, it was over nine years before all the patients could be relocated, and the building was earmarked for demolition. Oh, However, that'd be a great it received place to a stay reprieve overnight. and was transformed into a woman's home then a military depot, a school, and then the art center that it is today. So they kept it. The yeah. building is reported to be the home of the many former patients' ghosts. One of the patients who hung herself I using the stay. stairwell is said to be responsible for the cold spots in that area. A lot of activity also takes place on the first floor, where doors open and close and objects move by themselves. One of the more eerie encounters is that of a, a woman whose building. daughter had been kidnapped. She was admitted to the asylum due to a deep depression, but unable to cope with the loss of her daughter, she committed suicide by throwing herself through the first floor window. It's said she can be seen around the building as she still searches in hope of finding her lost daughter. So that that seems like it'd be a pretty creepy place. They've kind of upfitted it to be... I'm trying to make it a little more of a like a place to stop and check. Well, I mean, they've got it set up now as like a an arts and like yeah. I mean, that looks I was like a concert. For you to say crafts. <laughs> uh, that looks like kind of like a concert type thing. Yeah, a venue. Um, so it's it's not creepy in those situations, I guess. But that would it could still be eerie could because be. the way it just sits out like that. Yeah, that's Monte pretty Crystal interesting. Homestead in New South Wales. New South Wales. Now I talked about this one in one of my very first videos. But I wanted to talk about it again because that video was only short and I can go more in depth in this video. Many say this is the most haunted homestead in Australia and one of the most haunted houses in the world. It's located in New South Wales and its past is tragic. The property was built in 1885 by William Crawley and it's his family and staff that are believed to haunt the building. It all began when one of the Crawley's young daughters was thrown to her death down the stairs by her nanny, yeah. who later claimed that she was pushed by an unknown force. Another story is that the Crawley's housekeeper kept her mentally ill son tied up in an outhouse for more than 30 Damn. years, and he was found curled up next to the body of his dead mother. After being sent to a mental institution, he died shortly after and is said to haunt the building. Outside the house, the figure of a young boy is often seen loitering near the coach house. This was the place of the sad death of a stable hand called Morris, who used to sleep in the stables. One morning, he was taken ill and was too sick to get up for work. His boss did not believe him and set fire to his bedding. What the Morris wow. was too weak to escape and burned to death. That's fucked up. In this 1910, up Christopher Crawley died in the house and his death was caused by a gangrenous abscess on his neck. After Christopher died, his wife Elizabeth spent the rest of her life mourning until her death in the house 23 years later. Over this period, she had become deeply religious and had converted a small room upstairs into a chapel. Well, she needs it. Yeah. If, I mean, I, I can only assume everything like this happening under their, um, their property they had to have known something was going on, if not them the one causing it, so. This is where her apparition has been seen on many occasions, dressed in black and carrying a large silver cross. The remaining Crawley family continued to live in the house until 1948. In 1961, the caretaker of the now abandoned house was shot dead on the property by a local man Damn. who was inspired by Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. And she too is said to haunt the building. The present the owner, house Mrs. Come. Olive Ryan, purchased the abandoned Victorian house with her late husband in 1963. 
And Mrs. Ryan claims that one of their first odd experiences with the home was one night when the entire Oh, huh, shit. That's a beautiful home though. <laughs> yeah. The entire house was lit up despite there not being a power supply. This That's is when the Ryans uh, realized freaky. that there was something different about this place. Lawrence Ryan, their son, grew up in the mansion and after he married his wife, Sophia, she moved into the mansion. Soon after moving in, Sophia realized that she had a deep connection with the house and believes that she lived there in a past life as a maid. What the fuck is up with this picture? Dude's got the lantern and everything. I mean, like seriously, are they trying to do like an Undertaker look or something? Like somebody oh, just no. died? The old pictures, I mean. This the, doesn't even look that old. Well, I know, but just people people don't smile. And like. Have you seen A Thousand Ways to Die in the West? Yeah. He's like, that's weird. Why you don't smile, smile in yeah. a picture. <laughs> Over the years, the family have collected a series of photographs that appear to show apparitions and claim they have always felt as if someone is watching them. Mrs. Ryan said she regularly feels a hand on her shoulder and hears her name called as well as footsteps on the balcony Just when no out. one's there. Move out. Today, Monte Cristo <laughs> is visited house, by hundreds of ghost hunters, hoping to catch a glimpse of the spirits. And it's one of the most popular ghost haunts in Australia. Like if I could, if I could have a house built like that, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Like I, I would... I even like, like the. That. Uh, That's really cool. I think it's a little over the top on the top. Yeah. Of the uh, balcony about and this. The, yes. Yeah. But the bottom part's dope. The style kind of gives off an Asian vibe, though, in my opinion. I'm thinking like a cross between Asian and uh, British. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Mid century type. Look. It's a beautiful home, though. And it's one of. Devil's we became a house. <laughs> Devil's Pool well, this is located is near that, Babindon. That, what's it called? Devil's Pool. Devil's Pool. Devil's Pool Let's is go. located near Babinda, a small town in northern Queensland, in an area of outstanding natural beauty. From the top of Mount Bartle Freer, three streams of water can be seen rushing down, and as they all converge at the bottom amongst a group of huge boulders, they create a serene but deadly water pool. The inviting crystal water, surrounded by the striking scenery, entices visitors from all around the world. However, do not be fooled by the pool's beauty, as this place has a dark reputation, and for centuries has been feared by the Aborigine population after a tragic accident many years ago. A young woman called Ulana, from the Udinji tribe, married a much respected but much older tribesman named Warunu. Shortly after they married, Ulana met a younger man and ran off into the wilderness with him. When her husband found out, he sent a search party to track his wife down and end her adulterous affair, and it was at the boulders that the pair were finally caught. That looks like a beautiful swimming hole though. It does. Like that'd be a cool spot to Ulana swim. could not face life without her lover and threw without herself dying. into the swirling water where she drowned. However, it's believed that her spirit never left the area. It's even more For many years, a large number of young men have mysteriously met their end in Devil's Pool, adding credibility to the legend that This creek has claimed many lives. Wet rocks are extremely slippery. Beware of rapid rising water levels. Do not swim in main creek downstream of this point for your safety. Keep to walking track provided. Uh, this track leads to lookouts only. So if you know how deadly this place is. Swimming. Just don't swim there. Let's go. That she targets males. Since 1959, Unless you're a female, at guess. least 17 people there. have died in the pool in unexplained circumstances. Since 59, added to 19, the legend 19, that she targets males. Since 1959, at least 17 people have died in the pool Damn. in unexplained circumstances. There have been many visitors who report hearing a disembodied woman's voice calling out, as well as claims of ghostly eyes and faces peering out from beneath the water. Witnesses to the death have also noted that, that victims terrifying. appear to be yanked underneath the water, despite it appearing relatively calm, as if an invisible hand has grabbed them, and often bodies aren't recovered for several days due to the cold water and depth of the pool. 
Eerily, a plaque is erected near the site of one victim, simply saying, he came for a visit and stayed forever. Ooh, that's the danger creepy. has been recognized yeah. by authorities, and most of the area is now closed off and has several warning signs. Of course, there are other explanations for the tragedies, such as the speed that the water Drowning. runs, lack of buoyancy, and the untamed currents that potentially pull victims under the water. However, this doesn't explain the deaths that have occurred that haven't involved a swimming accident, when people have simply fallen in the water for seemingly no apparent reason. Just not gonna swim there. Princess Theatre. Melbourne. The Princess Theatre in Melbourne opened in 1854 and is famous for its international music productions. That's beautiful. Yeah. However, for many years, it's just as well known for its resident wow. ghost. The spirit of the actor, Frederick Federici, has been haunting the place since his untimely death in 1888. Frederick's real name was Baker, but he performed under his stage name Federici. He was an Italian-born British opera singer and performed in various operas around the world. In 1888, he landed a role at the Princess Theatre. On the opening night, everything was going well until at the end of the play, he sang his last note before he and another actor descended through a trap door in the stage. At the exact moment he went through the trap door, the audience noticed he seemed to slump slightly. Federici had suffered a fatal heart attack at the age of just 37. Wow. Although the rest of the cast hadn't realized and all went back on stage for the curtain call, unaware that Federici was lying dead beneath the stage. After discovering his body, many of the actors and audience were shocked, as they were convinced he was on stage taking his bow with the rest of the cast. Since this day, Federici's spirit has supposedly remained in the building, and has been encountered many times by both staff and audiences. So, effed up if he's haunting to, like, scare people. Yeah. Because... It's not like it was their fault. He had a heart attack. Uh, obviously, nobody acknowledged it because they didn't realize it. Did they say that he went out there and bowed? No, they thought that they thought that he was part of the crew. Like they didn't notice that he wasn't with the crew when oh, everybody okay. went out and bowed. Okay, because I, th I thought I thought was I thought they were saying that he actually was out there bowing even though he was dead. No, which would be even crazy. who claimed to see his ghostly apparition in evening dress wandering around the theater. Although Federici is not an evil presence, quite okay. the opposite. Okay. Theatre staff are so fond of him, they have a tradition of saving him a third row seat in the dress circle That's of every cool. opening night performance. So I take what I said back. He's a nice, mar nice Studley guy. Park nice Park House in New South Wales. He's Casper. Studley Park House overlooks Camden Golf Course and has long been considered as one of Camden's most haunted houses. The original owner of the house was William Payne, who built the mansion in 1889 for his wife. If that was upfitted, that'd be dope. If it was what? Like upfitted and just refreshed. Oh. But after running out of money, Updated. he sold it to the Same architect thing. who designed it. Over the years, it has changed hands several times and had several uses, such as a grammar school, an army training school in World War II, as well as a private residence. Tragedy struck in 1909 when 14-year-old student Ray Blackstone, who was boarding at the then grammar school, decided to go for a swim with his fellow student in a nearby dam, despite warnings that it was dangerous. While trying to swim to the other side, Blackstone got into difficulty, and despite the other boy's efforts to save him, he drowned. His lifeless body was brought ashore by students, and it's said to have been stored in the cold, dark cellar of Studley Park House, awaiting That's burial. a terrible place to put a body. This tragedy was followed in 1939 by the death of the son of the then owner, Arthur Gregory. Gregory had bought the house as a family residence and had made changes to the place, including building a golf course and converting the students' dining area into a theater. Sadly, it was here where his 13-year-old son, Noel, died of appendicitis. Yeah. It's believed the spirits of the two boys still haunt the house, and the sound of them playing and crying has been regularly heard. Others have reported unexplained lights and a mysterious lady standing in a window. 
In 2001, the psychological reality game show, Scream Test. Who's the lady? They no, just said two boys died. <laughs> Nebraska Furniture Mart, Texas, and the CW33? It's a Scream, I guess, Scream Was filmed Test in the TV house. Show. The four contestants spent time alone in various parts of the building. But for one of the contestants... So it was an American Scream Test TV show. Yeah, like... In Texas. <laughs> but over there? It might be one of the most haunted houses in the world. But that's just weird how they did that. It's funny because I got all my furniture from Nebraska Furniture Mart, Texas. Yeah. And the CW's all right, I guess. Yeah, it's okay. It's spent time alone in various parts of the building. But for one of the contestants, it was too much. She reported hearing voices and was so scared that she refused to continue with the challenge. The site is now a magnet for ghost hunters and even has a guided ghost tour. Hmm. I'd be interested if any of you have visited the house and whether or not you had any strange experiences there. So that's five of the most haunted. That's cool. Yeah, his voice is so perfect for this. Guys, if uh, if you have any more haunted and creepy videos about Australia history, um, murders. Yeah. No. Like serial killer type stuff. Sincerely, those are like interesting things. Now, if it's like a, like off of a, a TV channel or something, we can't react to it without getting banned from YouTube. But yeah. if it's like a personal made video like this that we can react to, that, that would be fantastic because these are very, very interesting subjects. Yes, that was really great. I really enjoyed it. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It helps us out a ton. If you want to see our future videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. And if you want to support us directly, hit that join button. And with that being said, my name's Miles. And my name is Fez. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.